Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing fantastic and that you're all having a wonderful day. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. The International Monetary Fund, or the IMF, has expressed ongoing concerns about recent turbulence in the banking sector. Despite actions by the U.S., which have not worked, and Swiss authorities to address issues with troubled banks. Pierre Oliver Gorinchas, the chief economist of the International Monetary Fund, warned that the story is not over and that the European Union banks could still face challenges as long as the bloc does not further progress on long-discussed mechanisms to handle failed banks. If you have been paying attention over the course of the last five or six months, you may have noticed a really weird trend. Not only have central banks around the world been raising interest rates uh, in stating that doing so would deter people from taking out loans and therefore cool down the economy and therefore lower inflation, None of that has really worked. Inflation is still with us. We are still well above uh, the 1% to 2% that many countries claim that they try to inflate their currencies per year. The number is actually far greater than that, but they always say that it is roughly around 1% to 2%. We are currently in a situation where many larger economic powerhouse countries are going through a 5 6 7 8%, 10%. Inflation rate in other smaller countries as well are dealing, uh, some of them, are dealing with 104%, 125%, 140% inflation levels. We've gone over that in the last couple of videos where we've seen a number of countries have uh, had an uptick, that's the word, in the amount of people within their borders who are trying to uh, buy more cryptocurrencies and or Bitcoin as some sort of a safe haven. On top of all of that nonsense that we uh, have and the stuff from 2020 that's still uh, around us, uh, the job loss, the, the home loss, you name it, it's, it's, all, it's all kind of there. Uh, banks have also begun to collapse as well. We have heard from the uh, economic leaders of many different countries, things are fine, things are okay. Uh, but they're not because things continue to fall. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that uh, we had 0% interest rates for far too long. Uh, free money was free flowing. Everyone could have gotten some if they wanted it with a 0% interest rate, which basically means you're uh, paying back nothing. And now we're basically all paying for the economic decisions of the richest people on the planet who are going unscathed by any of this because they remain billionaires while everyone else actually has to struggle. And then on top of that, the bank's collapsing. A lot of people are losing their money, losing their funds, and realizing once again in a, in a gigantic echo of 2008 that the money that they have in their bank accounts may not actually be safe. The bank may be able to take your money at a moment's notice and or collapse and say that they need it to be able to get themselves back on their feet. And a lot of people are not too happy about this. Earlier this year, economists and corporate leaders were optimistic, wow, about global economic growth, citing China's reopening, European resilience, and falling energy prices. However, last month's banking sector crisis has altered the outlook. The International Monetary Fund has downgraded its forecast for the global economy, pointing to the recent increase in financial market volatility. The organization now projects economic growth to slide from 3.4% compared to January's estimate of actual 2.9% growth. So going down instead of going up. The global economy was already grappling with thousands of issues. Some of them were... High and persistent inflation, which apparently is going to be with us for a while. We heard this from the U.S. Fed and a number of other banks around the world who have basically announced that, um, what was the term, that it's uh, inflation is stickier uh -huh, than usual and will be with us for some time. Rapid interest rate increases to combat it, elevated debt levels. Uh, also, don't forget, 
uh, stuff in your supermarket going up by 30, 40, 50, 70 percent, uh, rents going up by 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 percent as well. I'm pretty sure someone out there has been going through this or you've seen a documentary about it. Everything isn't looking too good. And the issue, the, the main issue that we kind of have is that uh, money will continue to be printed in one of two ways, and it is going to be uh, bad and good at the exact same time. So uh, we're at the point where the money printer will eventually have to be turned back on to alleviate the economies of the world. If they don't do that, things will continue to fall. The same exact thing with the interest rate hikes. They have to stop raising interest rates at some point. We have had clues that this may have been the last one. But, you know, we were also told that back in February and March as well. So we either stop raising interest rates, allow people to uh, take out money once again, the economy begins to recover, but inflation still persists. Or what's the other option? Or we turn back on the money printer, uh, push that back into the uh, economy and or into securities, allow prices to rise once again, and then inflation continues to rise. There's There's no real way out of this um, situation that we f currently find ourselves in. Uh, and it's more like a, in the nicest way, we need a new system. We have a new system, uh, but it just amounts to the amount of people who need to figure out that we have a new system that can uh, circumvent and or get around the issues that we have. And you know, I, I won't go into... Uh, why Bitcoin is the you know the miraculous hero of this, but think of the idea of actual scarcity. Uh, the fiat currencies are not scarce and never will be, and we have to figure out a new way to get into another system, or you know completely move over, or we will continue to have these problems. This article mainly continues talking about the other uh, issues that we're also going through and how this is you know an unprecedented time that we live in. But people have been saying that this type of stuff was going to happen since around the 1970s when we left in the United States. The gold standard. Um, I wish I had, you know, happier news for all of you. But the amount of people who continue to announce over and over uh, that we are, you know, one foot is in a recession and it looks like things are going to be getting a lot worse unless something changes. But part of the problem is... A huge part of the problem is that nothing changes in this system. The system is built in this way to continue uh, moving forward regardless of the billions of people that may actually be affected by it in any sort of way. And this becomes abundantly apparent when you hear the people who run the world uh, talk about the current economic situation. What was the other the thing that happened a couple days ago? It was some, I don't remember this guy's name at all. Someone within the United Kingdom who has a fairly high position in government uh, basically announced that inflation is here and poor people need to get used to it. You can find it. It's definitely like he, he stated it in a way that it was like, you know, it's here. People need to stop complaining about it. Just just make do with it. And people were like, I can't pay my electricity. My water bill is too high. My rent went up from 1200 to 1700 He was like, you know what? You just got to figure out a way to, you know, make do with it. And these are the, you know, when you have the the 800 millionaire people or you have the billionaires who are talking down to normal people once again, it begins to get quite annoying constantly having to hear that they destroyed the world and we kind of have to walk around in its ruins. So that's the news from the International Monetary Fund about just how bad things are. A strategist at Swedbank, a Swedish bank, has warned that regional banking that the regional banking crisis in the United States is spreading. After several bank failures, he stressed that PacWest Bank, Western Alliance Bank, and First Horizon Bank have all been subject to financial meltdowns. Part of the also also the issue that we are seeing besides everything that we were just talking about is the actual downfall of, of banks and what this has, the implications that this has not only for the people who are holding money with them, but also the other assets that the banks are holding that usually need to be liquidated in order to uh, prop the bank back up or let them have enough money to actually even be sold to another party. This is why we have heard quite rapidly whenever there has been, and I think we're now at like seven or so banks. 
like red flag, like you know, one gigantic red flag in the sky that's being waved. Uh, one bank is bad, three banks is terrible, seven banks is like, ah, so we're in like an actual terrible spot right now. But once again, the people who will be most affected by this are not the people uh, from the banks who continue to make tons of money and you know their billions from all the other things that's actually going on, but it's the once again the normal people. We have to trek through the mud once again after all of this is over. If we're talking about that this is going to be a long-lasting trend, uh, there are even like estimates I've seen around. I don't have it in this video. Uh, you can find it as well. There are people talking about that what we're currently going through is actually already worse than the 2008 crisis. But uh, basically, governments have found a way to like throw band-aids on it. To make it seem as if it's actually, like imagine a gigantic fish tank exploding and someone be like, oh, get five band-aids and kind of put it over it. This is where we're, we're currently standing right now. And the idea is that if you create public panic, the public will panic. If you tell everyone the actual situation that banks aren't doing well, if some of the largest banks in the world haven't been doing well, like when we heard about those European and those Swiss banks that weren't doing well, that is a very, <coughs> very big indication that all the other banks beneath it probably aren't doing so well monetarily as well. If you announce openly that inflation actually isn't 5, 6, 7% and it's actually 30 or 40%, this is why your rent has raised by 30%, why the food in the supermarket has gone up by 30%, why petrol and gasoline prices have gone up by 30%, why heating prices have gone up by... Right, that's the actual number... Of inflation. If you announce that inflation is actually 30 plus percent within the United States, banks are failing. The place that we told you to keep all your money your entire lives are actually going belly up and people may not be able to get any of their money out. If, if you haven't seen it before, I saw other people saying that they were watching it uh, again or once for the first time recently. It's a TV show called Years and Years. It's from the UK. Uh, I think it was maybe on BBC. You can definitely find it. Type in Years and Years TV show. It's incredible. It's a TV show about, I believe it's meant to start in the year 2020. I think that's what it is. And every episode kind of jumps ahead five, six, seven or so years uh, and begins to show like uh, the problems that we had in 2020 and how they basically balloon uh, by the year 2050, 2060 and just how devastating it is. It, it's a very, 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 very good show. It may not be for everyone. You know, I don't know everyone's tastes out there, but uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it and thought it was uh, dr just dramatic enough to let us understand that we are probably uh, on that route, at least right now. Pea Magnusson, a fixed income strategist at Swedbank, a Swedish bank, wow, Swedish bank, based in Stockholm, there we go, has warned about the spreading U.S. banking crisis. He said, after Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, First Republic Bank, and now potentially PacWest Bank, Western, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of banks, Western Alliance Bank, and First Horizon Bank. So that puts us up to eight then, because he's, he's, he's definitely missing two of the other ones that were also, what was the name of the Swiss one? I don't remember. Uh, all having been subject to financial meltdowns, the proverbial cat will be very difficult to put back into the bag. First Republic Bank was seized by regulators last week and most of its assets were sold to J.P. Morgan Chase. It was the biggest U.S. bank failure since 2008. Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank collapsed in March following the seizure of First Republic Bank. Shares of several banks, including PacWest and Western Alliance Bank, plummeted. He said, It's not hard to see the irony of regional U.S. banks having successfully lobbied for less regulations during the Trump administration, only to find that less regulation now is making them vulnerable to bank runs. Yeah, for those of you who don't know that, there's a, a very common thing. It happens every presidency. You can really look it up, every single presidency. Uh, every president ends up putting something into law that makes it easier for banks to basically uh, run amok, do as they choose, take out as much money, create as much money. You know, every president has a thing where they make it lightly easier. The, the, it, it's kind of like the, um, the boiling pot uh, idea, where if you put something inside of a boiling pot and you know, it's boiling immediately, it'll jump out of it. But if you raise the temperature slowly, the object inside of it doesn't realize that it is being boiled and therefore... So the idea is that every president does something slightly. Like if you even look at... Um, as far as like the idea of like progressive tax rates, as far as like billionaires and how much they would have had to pay 
uh, that goes down every single year. And the, the idea is eventually it will simply be zero. Like you hear about billionaires paying uh, no taxes. Those are like through loopholes. But the idea is to eventually make sure that they pay no taxes. But that'll probably be around a good 20, 35, 20, 40 year time frame. And the other thing is that um, every president, once again, has signed something into law that makes it so that uh, banks within, especially within the United States, uh, have an easier time doing certain activities. But a lot of these regulations only appeal to banks in times of, 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 of happy days when they're making tons of money. The regulations that are also stripped away have to do with actual protection for the customers, which also people don't realize. You, if you look back since the 80s, you see now you go, wow, things have changed a lot. But when you hear about one thing happening per year, one thing happening per year, it doesn't really look like much is changing. Uh, these also stop the banks from being protected by people being able to run to them and take all of their money out of it, which should have never really been a thing. There should be no bank protection from people being able to take their own money out of the bank if they feel like something is wrong. Like that inherently doesn't make any sense. If the bank isn't doing their job or you don't like them holding your money anymore, you should be able to go to the bank and take all of your money out of it. But some of the protections that have been uh, swapped away for years and years and years and years is if you have $10 million inside of a bank and they're only insured up to a quarter of a million dollars and the bank goes belly up, they go, okay, here, here's your 250000 You go, what's the rest of my money? Oh my, no, that's all we have. Those are also, like, there's so many issues with the banking system, but that's just how things currently are. So, um, it looks like we are currently actually potentially on the cusp, and, I, and, I, and no one knows. These are only projections. I think we can use relative intelligence, and we can see that uh, on top of all the things that we have discussed that are going on that might also be regional to you that I simply don't know about. Uh, we have a number of uh, banking people, economists, strategists, and also, you know, the the for, for for me the International Monetary Fund is a very big one. I always tell all of you uh, when we get news, it's usually a fraction of what's going on. You know, what what ends up being released to the public tends to be like, you know, we don't hear the entire story. We are not privileged enough to sit in those rooms with those gigantic tables where the world leaders talk to each other. So we'll hear in a time of of wrongdoing or things that are bad. You know, think things aren't as bad. 30% inflation, that's nonsense. It's 5%. When you hear the International Monetary Fund talking about things are bad, that means that things are worse than or that they're actually letting on. So um, I wish I had a clever way to tell you to prepare for it like the other uh, financial YouTubers who are telling you to take out more. Oh my gosh, the, 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 the videos I've seen uh, take out more debt. Uh, to get get a mortgage now because it, you know uh, the the interest rates aren't that high. And they might be going higher. This is really nonsensical things that these people. I I saw someone telling other people to get other jobs. Uh, I'm not joking. They were like, if if you're part of the gig economy and you already have two jobs, get a third one. It will allow you to save extra money so that when the economy does collapse, you'll have extra money to throw into the stock market. And I'm like, you. You, I have friends whose rent has gone up from like sixteen fifty per month for a studio, a studio apartment, and the the landlord is trying to raise it to like twenty one hundred. The last thing a lot of my friends are are worrying about right now is how much money they'll have to be able to throw into a dividend stock, or to you know, or some type of a corporation, or to to buy cryptocurrency. They they're worried about paying their rent. They're worried about why they have two jobs, why they don't have proper benefits from where from where they're working. So I, I do think a lot of times, and, and, and I think it's normal but abnormal. When people get tons of money, you've heard like people like, you know, lose touch with who they were before. So a lot of times, I think a lot of uh, crypto and also financial YouTubers uh, will make a video as to like how people can do better, you know, how to profit from the 2023 recession, 2023 Great Depression, you know, things are getting terrible and worse. And a lot of things that they say don't match up with the reality of the people who are watching them. There's one person, won't say their name, uh, about two months, three months ago, they had a video about how they were buying property and how much property they bought. And they were showing 
This this egregiously gigantic mansion that they bought for you know, one point one million and how they're using it as a rental property and it's like great that's really aspirational, but inflation's really high. You know I can't buy the same foods I was buying before. I haven't gone to the to the to, to the to the to the cinema to the movies in a very long time. I can't travel. I can't pay my rent. So cool. One day I hope to also own a $1.1 million mansion that I can rent out for, you know, $18,000 per month. That sounds great. But until then, you know, I'm waiting for the economy to recover so that the, the job that I'm you know, currently having right now, that I'm not as scared that they're going to fire me. Uh, I've seen it all over. It's very, very weird. The, the, the uh, information that people are giving. I've seen very few YouTubers talking about, like, saving <laughs> putting money away for a literal rainy day. I've mentioned that to all of you thousands of times if you don't know. Please know I am a very big advocate of saving. The idea of a and I and I don't know if people joke. Uh, I saw someone before. I always mention to my friends to save for a rainy day and I always say that here as well and I had I'm not joking. Someone was like, "What if it's not raining?" and I was like, you know, that doesn't mean like a literal rainy day. It means like a day where, you know, in your life, things are darker, cloudy, and you need to put money aside. While things, you know, if you are lucky enough to be in a situation where even right now, things are going great for you, uh, you have to understand that the way that the world and the universe works. There will be a point in your life where financially things may not be as good or great or wonderful. And you will look back and go, I wish I had saved that money. That's one of those times right now. Don't throw your money into any market that, you, you know, at the end of all of your, your payments, your bills, everything, your health insurance that you have to pay for. If you have extra income that would have gone to you buying a brand new television that you do not need, put a portion of that money into the cryptocurrency market. You know, not any more than you could ever afford to lose. That's very important. Uh, but if you are struggling, if things aren't looking too good, the last thing you should be worrying about right now is throwing your money into the crypto market, into the stock market, or trying to figure out a way to get a mortgage to buy a house. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> if we're talking about the International Monetary Fund and world leaders are talking about we might go into a depression, save your money. Put money to the side. Remember how 2020 caught all of us off guard? We never know what's coming. You have to put money to the side. You have to save so that when things are actually amazing and you have enough money extra to be able to put into a market, you can go, cool, I have money now. I can do something with it. But still, you got to save. I, I, I don't get I – have, I have friends who I know don't listen to the channel, and these people refuse to save any money. Refuse. I – it won't go too deep into this story. It's not my life. It's not my story. Recently heard about someone who I saw uh, who is, uh, they're, you know, they're not aged, uh, but they're 40-something. Uh, and they have recently had a light mental breakdown where they basically figured out, I'm in my 40s. I have no money saved. I have nothing. Uh, their job apparently was recently taken away from them, and it's one of those things that I don't want myself or my friends or any of you to ever go through. You have to prepare for the future, and it starts by saving and putting away money. Investing comes later, of course. It's a very important part of uh, economic growth, but I don't get how people wait until something catastrophic happens, and then they go, oh my gosh, I wish I had been saving the last 18 years when I had all those opportunities to. It's terrifying. Anyway, that's enough of that topic and discussion. Um, that's the um, economist at a large Swedish bank is also talking about that the U.S. banking crisis is not over. It is going to spread, and we will probably be hearing about more banks relatively soon who are also collapsing. Yeah. Let's move on. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters, Jim Jim, Jimmy Jim, American Crypto Academy, Martin Stroyer, Bodie McBoatface, Sam Ratter, Dotha Diddy, Manny Cryptos, Crypto Gambino, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Jamie Saad, and let's move on, Empire Queen, Roman Geba, Bitcoin Ben Arachno, Dave the Dealers, Din Captain Summing in the Z-Way, Lay Mobarazi, VB Nerd 21, Lauren DeSilva, Quoted Biddy, Troy, all good. 
Space Case, Need a Miracle, Pattern, Noster, Navarro, Williams, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, A Bibliophobia, Adam Grasick, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cole D3D, Setsuna, Paxis, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Yes to Crypto, Anytime Fitness, Monks Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger, Macho Nisa, and on Crypto with Lionel. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel who clicked the little join button below. Thank you to everyone who left a like, has left a comment or multiple comments. I do see you every single day. I wish I could also leave you a like and a the little heart emoji that they have there, but uh, it's, it's, it's like hundreds of comments. I do thank you for that. It does help out with the algorithm immensely and allows me to uh, be seen by other people who are also on YouTube. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having and have had a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.